Well, welcome to the uh, Beyond Cinema Studio presented by Celebs.com up here at Sundance, Morgan Spurlock. Mate, it's, it's really cool. We get to see you every year. Yes, whether, it seems whether, like it, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Even when it's... But what I'll tell you what it is that um, I think I've, I've consumed every product you've ever made. Right on. Well, thank um, you for that. Yeah, thank you I mean, keep, thank you for keeping and me employed. It, even <laughs> when I missed something, I think I caught Mansom on um, yeah. on Netflix, awesome. and I was like, "Yeah, well, Annette and Jason Bateman." And then all of a sudden, <laughs> I was like, you know, like some serious content, and yeah. then you know, kind of flipping back and forth. And I kind of feel like this is kind of emblematic of your career as well, is that you know, starting off doing gags, yeah, you know, and then and now I kind of cons- the thing that I totally dig about you is that. I think you are responsible for employing more documentary filmmakers than any other documentary filmmaker or producer. Well, knock on wood. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully we can keep employing more people. And I just, <laughs> you know, it's just, I mean, it's, it's also indicative of that community that yeah. it's like documentary filmmakers seem to be so less competitive. Well, I had, this, I had the same conversation the other night at, at a party where I said, they said, they said, all of us are so starving together. I said, we can't, we can't be like pushing and putting other people down. Like we have to collectively kind of rise up all the time, and I think that's what the whole doc community is all about. So they'll have to change from war- warrior poets to poet warriors. <laughs> that's right, exactly. Um, what's it like also on this on this project? I mean, even last year you were kind of coming up here yeah. and you were traveling around with some other doc filmmakers and introducing them to everybody. Right. Um, this year you've got these new people making these three-minute shorts. That's right. But you've also got people like Andy Timoner making them. Um, Lucy Walker. Yeah, Lucy Al Walker. With, exactly. Yeah. And then Al Mazels. I mean, Amazing. Talk about pioneers. I know. And then you have Barbara Koppel on the judging crew. That's right. Um, what's it like kind of just, I mean, because you're a newbie compared to them, but you're establishment now. Yeah. But those guys are really the and those pioneers. And those are people that I, you know, so look up to. And, you know, they give me a look at just like, I was sitting with Al yesterday and we were just talking about like the salesmen and Great Gardens and Give Me Shelter. And I mean, this guy, the guy's a legend, the movies he made. And, and to be able to, you know, people who I so looked up to for so long and be able to like really call them my peers now, Barbara Koppel, Steve James, Joe Berlinger, Rusinovsky, like it's, you know, it's a real, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. Do they treat you like, kind of like the step oh, kid? They still, they still treat me like the schmuck that lives next door. <laughs> you know, the kid, the dog keeps running on the lawn. You know, that's, that's who I am. I'm the guy, the kid that comes over. I'm the kid that comes over and is always like selling something for school. It's like, I've got these candy bars. And they're like, oh, fine, I'll take a candy bar. Right. <laughs> new basketball uniforms. That's right, exactly. oh. New basketball uniforms, fine. <laughs> Kind of yeah. the way your son treated you when you shaved your mustache exactly off that right. year. Yeah. Exactly. Um, talk to me about Focus Forward and these short yeah. films. Why did you want to do it? And how did you get a, like such a huge prize purse up? But yeah, I'm guessing yeah. you didn't put your own money up. I did not put my own money up. No. We, well, you know, we announced this last year. And what's happened over the last year has been pretty remarkable. Um, we got GE to back the whole project. So, you know, it's the GE Focus Forward Filmmaker Challenge is what we've done. You know, the, the Focus Forward started off as... as 30 filmmakers, you know, kind of recognizable, established filmmakers making 30 films about people who are changing the world, innovations, whatever. Yeah. Um, and then we wanted to open it up to amateur filmmakers, people who are out there making movies and could really kind of use a leg up in, in the business. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and what we got was thousands of submissions from all over the world that we then whittled down to like 25 semifinalists. And now there's five finalists who are here at Sundance. And they don't know who's won yet. One of them, but one of them is going to walk away with a hundred thousand dollars today. And the rest of them walk away with something too. Though, they right? all get something like yeah. yeah. So like whoever whoever this it's like Miss America. So whoever's like the fourth runner up will get <laughs> yeah. like I think ten or fifteen grand. You know the third runner hug. up. You know, yeah, and a hug. Third <laughs> runner up gets like twenty five, and then it's fifty, and then it's a hundred. That's amazing. It's amazing. And yeah. so is that specifically for them to put towards a production? They can put it towards whatever they want. They can put it towards a film. They could buy equipment. Um, you know, whatever, whatever they, they can go on a vacation after, you know, they can, can find, they can finally take that vacation. They can go to Vegas and put it all on red and be like, come on, let's get $200,000. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, you know, I've watched a few of them. I watched the Dean Kamen one because yeah. I just think that that guy's always up to something crazy. Dean Kamen is, a, that guy is astounding to me. And that's, and that's a great little short film about yeah. him. Um, there's good ones. I mean, I, all the films that we got were fantastic. All the finalists are really I mean, it's it's a tough decision. I'm glad I wasn't on the jury. Yeah, and so yeah. the the thing though is that at three minutes long, 
are they too long or too short or just right for just right. for the next <laughs> for the, for other groups of media to kind of pick up on them and yeah. turn them into kind of positive news stories? Well, what's been amazing is there have been films like Mind Kafan, which is a finalist, which is about the guy who created this giant rolling thing. It's got like right. broom handles on it that finds landmines. It looks yeah. like an anemone or it's something. It's incredible. It looks like this giant scene and yeah. basically they roll it out. Wind blows it across these minefields and it they, it explodes, you know, leftover ordinances that have been there for decades. Yeah. Um, that was picked up by the national media and international media um, because you know, all the countries where this is still going on, you know, whether it's over in the Middle East or or in South America, like people are like, oh my gosh, this is a huge issue we need to talk about. Right. Um, the invisible bicycle helmet got picked up by everyone. I yeah. mean, so what, what was really fascinating is how these films did catch fire and uh, and not only were kind of viewed by a huge audience, but then shared. Like I think there were 18 million shares so far with the films. The films haven't even been put on YouTube yet. Like this is just through our partner Vimeo and, and through the Focus Forward Films website. That's gotta be the greatest kind of conceptual challenge is that, yeah. yeah, we've got a lot of people now consuming really cool docs, right. but how do we get them out to the people that aren't necessarily that way inclined? That's right, and that's the whole, the original concept behind Cinelon and kind of what these three minute films were about was to create something that is, you know, anybody will give you a round of boxing. Like anybody will give you three minutes. Like I will give you one round of boxing for anything. I don't care what the idea is. Like it is, it is these are like, it is the elevator pitch of documentaries. And so you have these great films where people watch them and they're like, wow, that was actually pretty good. I'll watch another one. I'll watch another one. Well, you know what? My friend would really like this. I'll share it with him. Yeah. And we, we slowly kind of, we're, we're bringing you in. We're roping you in into yeah. the world of world documentaries. How do you personally manage, I mean, Cinelan, you just started. Yeah. Warrior Poet's been going for some time. Yeah. How do you personally even manage to uh, find the time to, to manage all this stuff? Yeah, I mean, luckily I, I don't have to manage all of it, which is great. You know, I... I was very given great advice a long time ago, which was hire people smarter than yourself and as often as possible. So yeah. I've got great people that work on all this stuff with me, um, where I can chime in and give my two cents when they need it, and I can you know uh, give my you know give my input creatively on things. But ultimately, on the day to day, there's plenty, plenty of people much smarter than me taking care of that. Very cool. What's yeah. next in terms of your own personal features? Uh, well, next personal feature, <clears throat> we're doing a TV series next. That's what that'll start airing in April, April seventh for CNN. Okay. It's a series called Inside Man. Um, where you know each week I kind of immerse myself into some sort of a social issue, a subculture that you know is like straight out of the headlines. You know whether it be medical marijuana or gun culture in America or end of life issues. You know it's uh, it's going to be kind of a hot button show every week. Cool. And then uh, the film that I'm shooting right now, I just got back from Tokyo where I was over filming the band One Direction for the last week. No so I'm doing I'm doing a uh, a big crazy 3D movie for Sony about. That band. So you were over filming them. Were you over filming them? Or were yeah, you... <laughs> I was. I was. It was their. It was their first time ever going to Japan, and to see like these these boys who, you know, their album just came out like five six months ago, and here were like thousands of Japanese girls like chasing them around town. I mean, it was surreal. It was so surreal. But something you've obviously personally experienced, so you were able to offer it like some. That's right. You know, all those advice. times when I get chased around, you know, at those uh, those documentary film festivals, you know, that's, yeah. that's exactly right. <laughs> all, all those hot young, all those, all those hot old. young doc groupies that <laughs> yeah. you have hanging out at Sundance and festivals like that. Yeah. Very cool. Well, thanks for coming in and spending a few minutes talking about Focus Forward with My us. Uh, small shorts, big ideas. Is that's that... right. Short films, big ideas. Very cool. Yeah. Thanks, man. Thank you.